today's class will be on bone loss in periodontal disease. To say that there is a bone loss, we would like to know what is the normal bony architecture in healthy condition. So the normal bony architecture has to follow two rules. The first rule is that the alveolar bone margin has to follow the CEJ. That is, the this is the alveolar bone margin which has to follow the CEJ outline. In addition, it has to 1 mm away from the 1 mm apical to the CEJ. The CEJ is here. The bone should be 1 mm apical to the CEJ. The number 2 rule is that the interdental bone should be coronal to the radicular bone. This is the interdental bone which should be coronal that is above the radicular bone. This is the radicular bone level. This is the interdental bone level. This interdental bone should be coronal to the radicular bone. Okay. These two rules has to satisfy for the normal bony architecture. So if it is not satisfying we call it as reverse architecture. This normal architecture is called positive bony architecture. If this rule is reversed, for example, it is not satisfying, then there will be two chances. For example, you consider this bo interdental bone is going down and down and down to the level of radicular bone, then it will be a flat architecture. You see that there is no scalloping. No? The scalloping will give you a positive architecture, but the this is flat architecture that is the radicular bone and the interdental bone are in the same level okay this is one thing for example again it's going down and down and down but the radicular bone is above but the interdental bone is below that is the interdental bone is apical to the radicular bone then we call it as reverse architecture these are all pathological condition. Now, positive bony architecture is the normal bony architecture. So, why there is a bone loss? So, microorganisms are not only responsible for the bony destruction in the periodontal disease. The host which is responding to this microorganism will release a lot of cytokines and chemical mediators which will ultimately lead to periodontal destruction. Okay, so you have to keep in mind not only the bacteria or the viruses or any microorganisms but also the host immune response, response which is very much important for the bony destruction. And bone loss are what are the osseous defects you mainly see in periodontal diseases. Mostly it will be supra bony, infra bony or interradicular. This is a very broad classification. There are various classification you can go through, but this is the general classification. So supra bony means supra means above. So the base of the pocket is coronal to the alveolar crest. Okay. For example, I'll show you here. This is the base of the pocket, but it is coronal to the crest. The base of the pocket is above the alveolar crest. In this case, we call it as supra bony pocket. Okay. This is a true pocket where the periodontal destruction has happened from here to here. In some cases, what happens? The pocket depth will be there, but there will be no periodontal destruction. Such cases is also come under supra bony pocket, but they are pseudo or gingival pocket. Like gingival enlargement, there will be a periodontal pocket depth sorry pocket depth but it, there is no attachment loss okay so this is called gingival pocket and infra bony pocket infra bony means infra means below so the base of the pocket is apical to the alveolar crest the base is here the base of the pocket is here but it is very apical to the crest crest is here so below the crest if the base of the pocket is there you call it as infra bony pocket. So the infra bony pocket is again classified as intra bony pocket uh, defect and craters. Okay. So there will be three wall defect, two wall defect, and one wall defect. So whatever number of walls, osseous walls are remaining, we call it as three wall. For example, three wall is remaining it is present then we call it as three wall defect if two wall is remaining then we call it as two wall defect 
if only one wall is remaining then we call it as one wall one wall intra bony defect mostly called as hemiseptum okay three wall defect remaining three walls are remaining so it gives you a better prognosis for the regenerative surgeries okay one wall defect will give you less prognosis for regenerative surgeries it will not be a uh, case of uh, regenerative but rather we will go ahead and do a uh, resective surgery this is craters the another portion crater is a cup like defect okay a cup like this is the normal outline i've drawn if only the interdental bone okay interdental bone is lost but the facial and the lingual walls are intact it produces a cup like defect called crater okay the facial and the lingual walls are intact okay but the interdental bone produces a cup like defect called craters it also comes under infra bony pocket then one is a interradicular radicular means roots so in between the roots that is furcation if the furcation area there is a bone loss we call it as interradicular in between the roots so again it's classified into horizontal and vertical how much of vertically the bone loss has lost how much of through and through that is buccolingually horizontally it is lost so based on that we will discuss on the next uh, videos on furcations when we uh, discuss it okay this is the overall view of osseous defects in periodontal disease thank you